Welcome back to Drafting with Mark and in this video we're going to be taking a look at drawing this in 3D AutoCAD. Now if you can check out the other video I've done with this one where I created this using 2D and this video I can tell you right now is going to be a lot shorter than that video was mainly because drawing isometrics and things of that nature in AutoCAD can be a little tedious so I advise you to go back and watch that video and compare it to this one. And for all of those who are tuning in and watching my videos, I want to say a special thank you. Uh, I do appreciate it and it keeps giving me the motivation to keep going. And for those of you that are liking this content, please consider liking and subscribing. And please share this with someone that you know is getting into AutoCAD or have just some general questions about it. So let's go ahead and get started on doing this one in 3D. Let's go ahead and do our normal stuff that we do. I usually turn the grid off. I'll go ahead and set this to ortho. And then let's take a look at the running O-snaps. So these are what we have. Now, this one is going to work really easy for us because it's going to be one view that we have to create and just do a simple extrusion. And it's going to take care of everything for us. All right. So let's go ahead and start off and create a circle with a radius. And this circle should have a radius of 15. Now, ideally, another thing that you might want to do is start this at 0, 0. But since I didn't do that, I'm just going to move the UCS. So I'm just going to give you some variety or other things that you can do in order to create this. Next, let's go ahead and put a circle with a diameter of 15. So it's located here. And we have a diameter of 15. We're going to use the array from command that is in the copy. So I'm just going to use copy. Go ahead and select my objects. Go ahead and hit the enter button. Then select the base point and then choose the word array. Now I need to give it a distance between, which in this case is going to be, oh, I'm sorry. I need to give it how many items it is. I have four items and then I have a distance of 40 in between them. But make sure you're pointing in the right direction that you need to go. All right. So once you have them, go ahead and escape out of that command. And then I'll go ahead and delete these two. All right, let's go ahead and connect these. So I'm just going to draw a line going here to here. Likewise, back with the line command. So I'm just typing L enter going from that quadrant to that quadrant. Let's go escape out of this. And I'm using shortcuts on here as opposed to going up here and showing you exactly where all of these commands are. So you can see that it is a lot easier if I just type in TR, hit enter. And then I'll go ahead and just click off what I don't want, right? Let's escape out of this and then I'm going to zoom into here. So this is where my circle is located and this is my zero zero. So now I'm going to go ahead and move this. So I'm just going to select my UCS. I'm going to click on the square here and then I'm going to place it right at the center located here. Now this is my new zero zero. Let me escape out of that. And you can also see that my UCS now is unnamed. Okay. So now I want to create my circle that's located. 5 to the left and 52.5 going up. So remember, if I'm going to the left, that's a negative number. So I'll create a circle and it's going to be a radius circle. So I'm just going to go C, enter. Then I'm going to give it its coordinates, which is going to be a negative 5, comma, 52.5. Once that should be created, it'll start previewing your circle. And then the radius of this will be 20. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and put the other circle that's located on the inside of this, and it has a radius of 12.5. So I'll go back to the circle command, and remember that it was my last command I used, so I'm just going to hit enter. I'll touch this circle, click on the center here, kind of stretch it out, and then I'll type in 12.5. Next, I'm going to copy both of these circles, so I'll use the copy command. I simply CO, enter. I'll go ahead and select both of these lines, or in this case circles go ahead and hit enter i'll pick a base point located here and then i'm giving it a relative so i know that i have to go 65 in the x direction so i'll type in 65 comma and then i have to tell it how tall or how high to go and it's going to be 37.5 go ahead and escape out of that now all right so you can see that 
by me having my dynamic input on, and that's what's kind of happening, it's automatically putting that at symbol in front for us. So that's why I'm not putting the at symbol. All right, now we can go ahead and draw a line going from this quadrant, going straight down to here. Likewise on the other side, so another line from this quadrant going straight down. All right, now we need to connect here, right? Remember that with the fillet command, it's only going to give us concave circles. So I'll go to fillet. Then I'll go and type in the radius. So I'm just going to type R enter. And then I'll give it the radius of the first one, which is going to be 55. I can go ahead and select here and here and create that one. I can also do the next one. So I'll go back to the fillet command. I'm just hitting enter. Then I'll type R enter. And then I'll type in my radius. My next one should be 62 point, And I typed in the wrong number there, 62.5. And then I'll use these two circles. All right. So the next thing I can do is I got two other ways I can use. I can either offset this or I can create a arc and then trim it. I think the easiest way would just be to offset it. It's going to save me a lot less work. So I'm, I'll type in O enter. I'm going to click on this quadrant. And then I'm going to come up and click on this quadrant. Once I do that, I'm going to select this arc and then click above it. All right. Let's go ahead and hit escape. And then go back to the offset command just by hitting enter. I'm going to select this quadrant. And I'm going up to, let's zoom in a little bit, this quadrant. Once I have that, I'll select this arc and then click it to the outside here. All right, let's escape everything and then start trimming some stuff off. So TR, enter. Let's go ahead and start trimming these portions off. I'm just kind of working my way around this shape. And then I'm, I'll also go ahead and trim this portion off. And we got to get rid of that as well. Okay. So we have everything. Oh, one more part. Everything that we need. Let's go ahead and escape out of this. Let's use the fillet command. So F enter. Then I'm going to use a radius. So R enter. The radius will be 20. So go ahead and hit enter. And then I want to use multiple, so I'll just type in M, enter. That's going to allow me to start going ahead and fill it both of these corners. All right, so we have everything that we need created. I'm going to highlight all of this, and then I'm going to type in J, and that J stands for join. So I'm going to J, and then it says I have 18 objects and two polylines were created. So the circles should be omitted. The polyline that it created should be this one, as well as this one on the inside. All right, so now we have everything that we need to complete our shape here. Let's go ahead and change into a regular wireframe. So I'm going to select here and go to 2D, I mean, get out of 2D wireframe and use the 3D wireframe. I'll go ahead and take a look at this in an isometric view by selecting that icon there, or that part of my view cube. And then I'll go ahead and put this on WCS, so that's going to snap it back to the world coordinate system. All right, I'm going to extrude all of this, right? So now I'm not set up for 3D. Although I'm not, I can still use the extrude command just by typing in EXT. And you can see that it's going to already preview it out and say, hey, you must want to use the extrude command. So I'll go to extrude. I'm going to select all of this. Enter. And you can see now that it's ready to extrude. Just give it the height. The height that we're going to need will be 30. All right. So once I'm done with this, now I need to subtract all the rest of that stuff out. So I'll go to subtract. And I'm just typing in SUB. Remember with the subtract command, I'm going to select what I want to keep first. Then hit enter. And then I'm going to select all the parts I want to remove from it. Right. So I want to subtract that from it and each one of these cylinders. All right, so once you have them all selected, go ahead and hit enter. Your 3D part should be created. Let me go ahead and take a look at this in shades of gray. And now we can take a look and do indeed see that. Now, the one thing I will say about the 3D ribbon is, is that I can rotate this thing and do other things. I don't have that option right now because I'm still in my 2D ribbon. So I can go ahead and switch over to the 3D ribbon. 
But if I don't want to do that, I can, if I know the command that I want to use, and it's going to be 3D rotate, it's going to be the one that I need. So I'll go to 3D rotate. I'll go ahead and select my object. Hit enter. It's going to ask me for a base point or it's going to bring up my kind of my uh, gizmo. I'll select this red axis. Then I want to go up this direction. So I'll select here. And then I'll select the blue axis. Kind of rotate it this way. Then do a left click there. All right. So I'll escape out of this. So all of my work is done for my three dimensional stuff. I have it located in the right orientation that I want it. And actually I don't. I just looked at something here. I meant to have my front facing to the front. Let me go ahead and rotate this one more time. And then I'll use the 3D orbit again. So 3D, sorry, 3D rotate again. I'll select the shape again, go ahead and hit enter, and then I'll select this blue. And I want that to be shaped this way. So I'll go ahead and do a left click here. All right. So now this is the correct way I do it. So this is the front view. So if I select front, this is the front view I want to see. All right. So the next step is, is that we cannot do any kind of dimensioning here of this part in, in 3D. Otherwise, you have to do some other stuff. And I know I showed that in another video. So if you're interested on how you can dimension something in 3D, I do have another video referencing that. And I'll try to remember to put the link up here in the top right. But other than that, let's go ahead and start doing the 2D work on this one. So I'll jump over to the layout tab. And once again, remember that I can't typically do any kind of dimensioning in that model space if I'm working with a 3D part. All right. So I went ahead and deleted my viewport. I'll go ahead and create a rectangle. The lower left corner is going to be at 0, 0, and let's make the upper right 11, 8.5. Choose the offset command. So I'll just type in O enter. I'll go ahead and put in my distance of 0.25 enter, select the rectangle that I just created and then offset that to the inside. All right. So now that I have all of my my title block here set. Let's go ahead and start putting in some other views to this. So I'll go up to the word base and then I'll choose the from model space. Go ahead and give it a second and it's looking in model space for if I have any three dimensional objects. Uh, in another later video, when I get to doing multiple stuff, I will show you that you do have the option of selecting objects in the background. So if you don't want that object that you uh, have created in the background, you do have some other options where you can kind of select other options. And you can see that it's actually the icon is located here. But I'll try to remember to show that when I get to a video where I have multiple parts. Okay, so I have this view here and we can adjust and play with the view size, remember? So I can just select here in the drop down and I can either increase that or decrease it on however I want to do. So just making it bigger, go down in the list. And I think that's probably big enough for what we need. Let's go ahead and click here. Go ahead and hit enter. So when I do that left click, I'll come up here and place my view. Do a left click here. And then I'm going to rotate over to this way and then put in my isometric. Do a left click here. And then hit enter. And like a good drafter, it should be able to knock out all of that stuff rather quickly. All right. First, let's start working with an isometric here. So I'm just going to click on this one. Then I'll go to edit view. I'm waiting for my ribbon to change here and then we can make this a little bit smaller. So I'm going to not go from the parent and you can see that that is what three eighths. Let's see what a quarter looks like. Okay. It's a little bit smaller and we are also going to change the way it appears. So let's go ahead and make it shaded with visible edges. Go ahead and hit okay. All right, the rest of this stuff is just going to be the normal stuff that we usually do anytime we're doing any drafting, right? So I can automatically go and take a look in my annotation here. And let's go ahead and take a look at my center marks and see how they're going to come out. So I'll go to center mark first. I'm going to select this arc here. I'll select here. And then I'll select the smaller circles in between. All right. I'll also go ahead and select this arc here and then this one. All right, so all of my center marks are on here. 
we can look at the top here and you can see we have a lot of hidden lines and things of that nature on this one which is going to be fine for what we need in my opinion it looks a little confusing but we'll let that be the way it is let's go ahead and start putting some dimensions on this the way that i'm going to do that is i'll select this icon here that's the exact same thing as selecting d and enter or typing in d and hit enter it doesn't matter since we are using paper space to do these dimensions so i can't reiterate that enough it doesn't matter which one of these styles you select because it's still going to be one to one so i'll go ahead and use the standard go to modify and then we're going to start at the right tab right so i always like to start with my primary units i'll go ahead and just tell it to suppress the trailing zeros here Underneath the fit, we don't have anything to worry about because this thing is automatically set to one to one. So I'll just leave that at one. Let's go ahead and make our text height a little bit smaller. I'll type in 0.125, which is an eighth of an inch. Go to my symbols and arrows. Go ahead and turn that to none. And then hit OK. And then finally close. All right. So now we're ready to start doing some dimensioning. I'll start here at the bottom. Let's just use a regular linear dimension. So I'm going to use shortcuts as opposed to going to look for what I need up here. The easiest way I like to remember this is that if I start with D and then I type in the first two letters of the one I want to use. So I want to use a linear, right? So D L I go ahead and hit enter. I'll select that endpoint to that endpoint, right? Now I'll come down here and place my dimension and I might need room. Let's go ahead and move this up. I'm going to go ahead and select this view here, select the grip in the middle, kind of move it up just a little bit more. All right, let's escape out of that and move this down. Okay. Next, let's go ahead and put a dimension between here and here, right? So once again, DLI, enter. I'll start with this endpoint, going to that endpoint. I'll place that dimension here. And then if I want to do a continue, I'll select or just simply type in DCO, right? So dimension continue go ahead and hit enter and then simply click on that endpoint all right let's escape out of that let's see if we have enough room to complete the ones on this side so let's go back to the dli enter i'll select this endpoint to this endpoint go ahead and place that dimension next i'll type in dco enter and then select this endpoint all right, let's start working on our top dimension. So remember that we want our dimension to be on the outside, right? So when I type in DLI, it matters which one you pick first. So I'm going to select here and then here, and it should swing that dimension on the outside. Let's see if I can get it to rotate up. And that's the kind of sometimes the problem with these dimensions that are so close. Let's try that again. DLI. And I'm just trying to get that number there. So I'm just going to left click it here between here. And then when I zoom out, then I'll move this up. Okay. Now sometimes you can see that it did cross my dimension line there. So I'm just going to select this dimension. And then I'll place it. It should be an endpoint somewhere along here. Okay. Here's another one of those things that you could see that if you ever got these, these are like little uh, warnings or something. And you can see that I kind of disassociated that dimension when I moved that up there. But I can just come back and reassociate it and just tell it, hey, go from this endpoint to that endpoint, and then that will clear it up. There's another command that you can use to turn that off. And if I'm not mistaken, it's called NO Monitor. This one here. So if you utilize this command, you have an option to turn it off, right? It's set to two right now. But if I wanted to go ahead and take a look at that in the help, and that's one thing I can recommend that you do, you can turn that off with that command. All right. So kind of getting back to this, let's go ahead and finish this. So I'm going to type in DLI, enter. I'm going to go from this endpoint to that endpoint. Go ahead and place that dimension there. We have one more dimension that I would like to put on here. So back to DLI. From this endpoint. Oh, sorry. Let's go escape that. DLI. From this endpoint at the bottom to that quadrant. And that gives me a dimension. All right. Let's take a look at the one at the top. So back to DLI. 
Go ahead and select here and that endpoint and click here. Some of those other rules also apply. So if I'm back in my linear command, right, instead of selecting both of those endpoints, I can just hit enter and then I can select the line that I want, right? And then I can place that dimension. So if it's a continuous line, you can get away with doing that. So just keep that in mind as a rule. All right, let's knock out all of our radius dimensions. So D R A is that's going to be my radius. And this one, I just will keep hitting the enter button because it's just going to be a repetitive command. So I'll select here. Let's go ahead and hit enter. Click here, bring it down. And I'm just going, remember, I'm just hitting the enter button and that's all it's doing is taking me back to the last command. I'm trying to make sure I leave myself just enough room to get in between all of these. All right. Oh, let's see, I might have another one over here. Let's just go ahead and hit enter. We do have one here. And go ahead and hit enter. We have one here. Okay. Kind of still working my way around. I have one here. I have a dimension here. Let's go ahead and move that. I'm trying to keep it on the inside here. And we have one more dimension, which is going to be a radius dimension. So, I mean, sorry, a diameter dimension. So that's D, D, I, right? So I'm trying to create a diameter dimension. And that's going to be here. The last thing that you can do is just more or less the cosmetic stuff. And it's just with the ED command, just for edit text. So I can go to ED. Then I can select the text that I want. Remember, the shortcut is always to hit the home button on your keyboard and then type in four. X and give it a space behind it. Once I click off of that and then I'll click on this dimension, it should go back to that edit command, right? And for some strange reason, my computer is running a little slow today. So this is going to be 2X. Let's see. So I'll hit the home button and then type in 2X space. Click here. I'll go here. Home button. 2x space between it and just a couple of more so I can select here home button 2x with a space behind it and one more dimension here at the top home button 2x space behind it okay and we have one more thing to do, or actually a couple more things to do. I'm going to select here, back to that edit, right? Let's go ahead and put the parentheses in the front and in the back, right? So the home button is here, and then you can follow that with the end command, or the end button on your keyboard, and put the one in the back of it. Same thing on this one. So if I select this dimension, I hit the home button, open parentheses in the front, hit the end button, and that's the one that's behind it. Do a left click off of it and then hit escape. All right. So you can see that I do have a dimension there crossing. Let's clean that up just a little bit. Let's move that back. Okay. All right. So now we have almost everything we need to be done. You know, it's kind of my OCD part of me is saying, hey, go ahead and make the title block fit the paper, right? So we're going to do a right click here on layout one. Go to page setup manager. Once the dialog box appear, go ahead and hit modify. In the drop down, and if you've seen any of my other videos, it's going to be DWG to PDF. So that's the one I'm going to look for. And then it's going to be ANSI full bleed. This is an A size drawing, 11 by 8.5. I'm going to change this to the extents. I'll tell it to center it. And it is one to one, so there's no need for me to adjust anything else. Once I hit OK and then close, you should see that it will indeed do that, right? So Hopefully you enjoyed this video and remember that if you do like this type of content and you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. It does give me extra motivation to keep doing more videos like this and also keeps me, you know, kind of let me know that you guys are engaged in this type of video. Please leave me a comment if there's something that I left off or you, that you're unclear about. And I do read those and try my best to respond to them whenever I can. All right. So thank you for watching and please go ahead and share this video and thank you and uh, until the next video.